Hello, Walter Figueroa here. In this video, we are going to do a little bit more uh, setup to our character um, ready for posing file. So, in the last uh, in the last video, I brought in my character generator custom character file into Maya and went ahead and set this character up with a human IK uh, control rig and this this file for the most part is ready to be used but what i want to do i want to go over a couple of other things uh, additional setups so we're gonna we're gonna add for example we're gonna add a floor plane and we're also gonna add some lights but i also want to talk about a couple other settings as well so let's go ahead and get started so within this file i'm going to go ahead and create a floor plane i'm going to go under create polygon primitives and i'm going to create a disk I'm just using the default settings. And for this disk, let's go ahead and go into the um, channel box. Let's see, for some reason, I'm getting some sort of uh, glitch over here. So let me just minimize this so we could uh, use it. Okay, that, that's fine. And for the scale for X, Y, and Z, I wanna go ahead and change this to 10,000. I want this large, really large. Now, one thing I want to point out, and you could already kind of see, is that uh, for the camera that's in this specific file, uh, and I don't know if it's something that's specific to the file, uh, the camera that was created because of the character generator, but I want to point something out. As I start to zoom out, notice that the background this is what's called the clip plane. There's two settings. There's a near clip plane, how close you can get to your actual model before stuff, stuff starts to clip. And then that's the near clip plane. And the far clip plane is how far things get go before they disappear. And right now this is kind of really low. To change this, you could select your perspective camera now I'm gonna, I have my outliner open. So I'm gonna click over here, perspective for my perspective camera. And what I wanna do, I wanna switch to the attribute editor. So I'm gonna click on it right here. And you can see right here, the near clip plane is fine, uh, 0 0.003, but the far clip plane, it's actually really shallow. It's only set to 32, I'm gonna change this. Uh, 1000 should be fine if you want it to be the same as your uh, plane. Um, I'm sorry, as your uh, floor plane, you can set it to 10,000. I'm gonna just leave it to 1000. And you can see that now I could really scale this down. I could still see my scene. So that is adjusting the clip plane, specifically the far for your perspective, for your perspective camera. So now that we've done this, now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and create some lights. I, I'm going to be using Arnold. And for some reason, those uh, spotlights uh, weren't showing up. Um, but I still wanted to use Arnold anyways, because I wanted to use uh, under Arnold lights, the physical sky. I, I like the, the look of this one, what it does. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And in order to use this, we, need, we do need to set our render settings. So I'm going to go into the render um, settings window. I'm going to change the renderer using not my software, but Arnold renderer. Now I'm still in the common tab. Uh, what I'm going to do for right now, I'm just going to leave it at 640 by 480 because it renders out really fast. But I'm probably going to want to change this to at least the HD 720. But I'm going to leave it at this lower resolution because it allows me to see what it's going to look like, but it doesn't take as much time. And once I'm ready to render, I'll up the, resol the resolution. And I will close this for right now. Let me go ahead and kind of zoom in. I'm going to go into Arnold, open the Arnold render preview or Arnold render view. Over here on the top right hand corner, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the live IPR session. And now it's gonna start to render. And what I could see right now is that it's a little dark. So I'm gonna click on the background, which is gonna select my dome sky. 
And what I'm going to do, I'm going to increase the intensity. Let's see, somewhere around two is going to look good. And notice how it looks a little gritty in the background. These are where I can now adjust some of the settings. So I'm going to go back into my Maya uh, uh, render settings under system. I have an NVIDIA GPU. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, a relatively new one, you can switch from CPU to GPU. Now, if you do this though, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. It's a GPU. One of the benefits is that it renders a lot faster. You can see this took one second, whereas a CPU, uh, it also took one second, but it's probably a long second compared to the short second. I'm gonna go back to GPU. Under Arnold Renderer, I could, I do not have for GPU, I do not have the capability of changing some of these settings individually. But I do like by enabling the adaptive sampling, it gives me good enough quality. Now, if I go back into system and change this to G CPU, now it's rendering. It is rendering with that, uh, I'm gonna go back right here. But now notice the total light right here. Uh, 117 to 5200. So, and it's still rendering. So I don't know if it's using all of these. But you can see with CPU, it takes a lot longer because now with these settings, it has the capability of having so much more uh, lights. I'm gonna turn this off. So it's rendering again. So you see that took a second. But if I enable this, so let me go ahead and drop this down maybe to 10. You can see it's 117 up to 1,300. And now you can start to see it render. And if you do not have an NVIDIA GPU, uh, or maybe you don't even have a GPU at all, uh, you'll have to use a CPU. And you can see this took 17 seconds and it's all right. Uh, I'm going to leave that turned on. I'm going to turn back my GPU. And I'm going to go ahead and bump this up to 20 again. And for me, these settings right here are good enough. This took six seconds as opposed to, uh, I, I don't remember how many seconds the CPU took. Uh, Technically with 20, I didn't finish it because it was taking too long. Let's see, I stopped it and re-render it. And right now it's going. So it's slowly working, depending on how many CPUs you have, if you have uh, hyper-threading, uh, how fast each uh, core is, lots of different settings uh, that are taken into consideration. But you can see even with this one, though the quality looks good, it's going a lot slower than my GPU. In this case, I would want to stick with my GPU. But of course, out of curiosity, uh, just to show you the different settings. Okay, this took 49 seconds. So changing this to 10 and using GPU, this took two seconds. I actually changed it to 20. And I think I'm gonna be fine with this one. Six seconds, excellent. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. And I'm gonna stop this because I don't need a render at this point. So now what I have within this scene, I have my, my lights, I have my floor plane, I fixed my, uh, my clip plane. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and save this file. I'm gonna go to file, save scene, because I, I do wanna update this file because this is my uh, file that is uh, ready for posing. So now that I have these settings in here, now what I could do, I could go to file, save scene as, and this time I'm gonna tell it to, like say for example, uh, instead of 
ready for posing. Maybe this is gonna be just pose one. I'm gonna tell it save, continue. What I would do, let's go to the human IK. I would want to des decide what type of pose I want. Maybe I just want uh, some sort of hero pose. What I like to do, I like to start off with selecting the hips and I like to lower the hips down. So that way we're able to change the placement of the feet. So I'm gonna select this foot. You see, it's like, uh, I, I don't want to go too far out. Right here, I could always undo. And notice uh, for my settings, the reason I'm able to do this is because I have the full body selected. I just want the body part. I'm gonna select the right foot. And I want, I want the legs definitely to, to be on the floor. What I can always do is just to make sure that they're on the floor there, looking at the front view. I'm maybe going to rotate the feet just slightly outward a bit. And maybe I'm gonna have one hand. Again, I wanna make sure that it's set to body part. Let's see, I'm gonna move this hand. Maybe I want this hand on her waist. I want it somewhere right here. I'm gonna adjust the, the fingers in a moment, but what I wanna do, I wanna move the elbow off to the, to the side. I need to lock the translate for the wrist so that I can now select the elbow. And move this to the side. I can select the hand and now I could rotate the wrist. Oh, one thing I wanna point out, do you see my rotation? I want to change this. I'm going to double click my move tool and change it from world to object. So now it's going, I like this better, so that I could rotate this. Based on the object. I need to move the hand out a bit. I can now go into the fingers. So I could either use my move tool or my rotate tool to change the placement. So I think I want to Let's see, let's go to rotate. And I'm gonna click on each finger. See right here, I need to rotate this out a little bit more. Let's see, the middle finger, I'm gonna rotate this one so that it looks like it's, so each finger looks like it's actually touching her side.
And you can see how it's just, it, I also have this control right here that just kind of lets me move the hand in a bit. So maybe I'll do that first and not have to bring these fingers back out so they don't clip. But what I want my students to do is I definitely want you to, before we start animating, we should start posing our character. Let's see, I have to do a little bit of rotation here. Okay, that looks good. I just gotta fix this finger out a bit. Let's go back up. Let's look this hand. It's gonna be pointing directly out. Let's uh, rotate her arm a bit. Let's see, actually, can I rotate? Oops, don't want that, don't want that. So just subtle rotation here, and then more rotation here. Let's go to the hand. So she's gonna be pointing with her pointer finger. Let's put her thumb in. What you can also do, you could always use the move tool as well. So you could position it as well. I'm going to hide the x-ray. And I didn't change any of, because she's so standing up, um, you could always change also the placement But there you go. What happens if I go to render? <laughs> nice, I like the shadow as well. Uh, happy byproduct. All right, but that is an example of uh, this file. Like I said, I... Um, Added the floor plane, I added the lights, changed the clipping, uh, the near and far clip, and showed you an example of how to pose the character and using my camera as well to render this out uh, using Arnold. I saved this one out as uh, my file name. Uh, not This is not the ready to pose. I made a copy uh, or save as and renamed it to pose one. And so I'm going to go ahead and update it as well. Command or Control S so that it is saved. And let me know if you have any questions. I look forward to seeing what you all create. And I'll see you in the next video.